Hi, good evening folks. In this video, we're going to take a look at the things I believe got to go right this coming October. Coming up. Alright guys, I got a bunch of videos I'm trying to make tonight and uh, I'm in the intermission here in the game and I'm finally home and I want to get some things done. Not sure what time I'll get these up, but I do plan to put out videos tonight. So regardless, if you don't see them tonight, they'll be out there for tomorrow and finally I'll have gotten some stuff done. Now, I came up with some, some ideas for videos I want to touch on and um, we're just going to go right into it. These are five things I think we need to do right this coming October, okay? Because if we're going to have any kind of push for a playoff spot, a lot, because we're going to be doubted even by our own fan base that we're actually realistic team to actually look at as a playoff team. Um, a lot of people just won't believe that the Sabres are ever going to make the playoffs again the rest of their history and the entire Earth's history and all of it. But if we're going to surprise the league next year, make a push. By the end of the year, everybody's saying the Sabres are going to make it. You know, if we're going to have that type of team, I believe the start is as important as the finish, mathematically. Now, is it as important as... No, it's not as important for me as a fan. I like to see my team finish strong, okay? We've started strong a few times over the last few years. We have. We've had some strong starts and we've crashed and burned. Now we got to do, we got to have a, a, a strong start because I don't believe this team will crash and burn next time around. That's the difference with this bunch now with teams in the past. So let's take a look. I'm going to throw five things at you guys. No particular order really, but uh, I'm ju I just marked them down as they came into my head. All right. Uh, let's go with... Um, Okay, we'll just start. We'll start on the list. We're going to go with number, we'll go with number five and work our way up. We'll do it that way. Number five, okay, I got stay healthy. And I've talked about this before, guys. We've got to stay healthy. We have to have, we have to have it in the cards also if we're going to get into the playoffs because it's not going to be an easy task for these kids. It's not. It's just not. There's going to be some tough times up ahead. There's going to be some trials, tribulations. There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to go through. Losing streaks, those are still coming. So, you know, we're not just going to walk in and win 60 games and it's not going to happen. But if we're going to make a push and we're going to be a team that, say, wins 45 games. I'll just throw a number at you. 45, there's a chance we're in the playoffs all of a sudden, right? And if we stay healthy will be a big part of that because we can't have like last year where it just seemed like, you know, I'm going to have to research and do how many man games we've lost compared to other teams last year. We lost, there was a lot of man games lost. I know the Habs got really hit, but they also had guys that were out all year on, on medical leave and all this that counts against man games lost. Whereas our regulars, you know, that they, they, them, it's Price Weber, we're counting against that also. So it's different in Buffalo because we lost our guys early from the first game of the season on. We got to stay healthy. Okay. I just want to stress that we got to stay healthy. Uh, number two, to start off good. Okay. In October, we got to win at home. Guys, this has been a struggle with the boys. How often that we seen during the season, the home record just wasn't up to par and we knew it was going to cost us any kind of a run for any kind of a any kind of a thing spot, whatever it was, right? If we had any hope that the team could maybe squeak in and get hot late in the year, it kept fading every time we played at home. I found every time we played at home, we just seemed to just didn't show up. We just didn't show up. The only guy that felt like he showed up every time in, time out was Tage. Besides that, it just seems like we were so damn inconsistent at home. That's got to change next year. I figure... 10 games over 500 is not a bad start if we can get into that zone because I do believe with a young team, I do believe that the Sabres are going to win on the road too. So that's what I'm looking at. But if we could be something like maybe 25, 13, and 4 somewhere, or uh, thir sorry, 25, 13, it would be 25, 13, and 3. You know what I mean? If we could be somewhere in that area, 24, 14, and 3, then there's a chance that we're looking at a bubble team. Not that it's going to happen, but I wanted to mention it. No off-ice drama. 
We don't need any more drama. We had enough drama last year. This went on and on and on last year, guys. For how long? With the whole Jack Eichel thing and his neck and all this and the fans saying you're going to get nothing back. Nobody's going to take an injured player off you. And oh my God, it went on and on and on. We seen it all season last year where we're just going through this, this crisis of a, of a situation. And then to top it off, we have, you know, the off ice drum and Jack's threatening us with filing a grievance and all this stuff. And and then we had his buddy Robin Leonard saying things about us and ah, look what the Sabres did to me five years ago. We don't need any more off ice drama is what I'm saying. We just don't need any of it. It's a distraction. It can't do any good for this team. Although I got to say this, this team came through at flying colors last year and walked right through the fire, walked right through it, just didn't care. And they kept doing, going about their business day after day with a, with a, a, let's face it, a weak squad and we still continued pushing forward. We, we went through a lot last year, folks. We did. We went through a lot. We went through a, a season where not only were we supposed to be really bad, <laughs> according to everybody, we were supposed to be terrible, right? But we also went through losing our core, really, a, a lot of our veteran core when we lost Risto and we lost Jack and we lost Sam. We went through that. And not that the other two caused any problems. We knew Jack was the one that was really upset, but still, you know, no more drama this year. I'd like just to have a, a summer where, you know, uh, this is why I'm hoping with uh, Olofsson, there's not drama with his contract. I'm really going to be watching for that. I will be. Number, a number, so that was five, four, three. That was number three, no off ice drama. Number two, we have to take a jump in the power play this season. The, the, our power play, Yes, it got better last year, and yes, it got good down the stretch. I do realize that, but overall, where we were in the league wasn't good enough and not good enough to be a playoff team. We were very close, though, more than people think, because if we weren't going through the whole subtraction of Jack off the power play, right, we might have had a better power play last year, but we were adapting. We were just getting into it. And don't forget, Tuck wasn't around either in the beginning. There's a, there were guys that just weren't around. And this is before we knew we had a, beach, a beast in Tage, right? We, we, there was a lot of things we didn't know yet. So it was a, a year of learn, a year of development, of course, but also a year that we were, cl I think we're closer than people think when it comes to our special teams. I guess I'll just leave it at that, guys. That's how I feel, you know? I really think Next year, we could be a top five in the league in power play. I really do with this bunch we have right now. I'm not just saying it and, and trying to throw false hope out there and, uh, and trying to, you know, create something that's not realistic. I believe that our, our, especially if Olofsson has his shot back, this could be a top five NHL power play. This is what we have to see next year, I believe. Again, starting in October, all these things have to, you know, stay healthy, win at home, no off ice drama this off season and during the season, jump in the power play definitely is important because let's face it, guys, the top power play teams, go look at it. They all make the playoffs. They all do. There might be one or two that didn't and one or two that got in, you know what I mean? But it's not, the odds are like 14 out of 16. You're looking at like 90% chance of making the playoffs if you're in the top 16. We just got to be a top five between top eight, I figure. But I think the Sabres, what they have right now, could be a top five, realistically. And number one, yeah, I guess this should be number one. The team unity continues, okay? Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's no problem. It is. Because sometimes, folks, you got magic and you got magic for one year. And that was a magical thing that went down last year when it came to our team unity, the brotherhood, all of it. Call it what you want. The way, they, the way they gelled together, the way they fought for each other, the way they came through in the clutch games together, the way they were off ice together, the interviews they gave, just there was so much positivity this year. No kidding they felt good Jack was gone. You know, like, you know, why don't they just say it, you know, and don't want to hurt his feelings, I guess. But no kidding, there was a big change in that dressing room once we got rid of some people and brought in some new faces. I, I wasn't surprised, but I was surprised at how they united like I'm saying here, team unity, I didn't expect. I thought we'd get better because I thought there'd be, 
like a, a more of a gel, a better, just a better context of what's going on inside that dressing room. But I never thought it would be, you know, like when that, that story about when um, Ocposo called the guys, they were in LA and they wanted to go to a Lakers game. And he called uh, some of the guys and asked if they go. The whole team went, the whole team. It wasn't just some of them, all of them went. That's rare, folks, that's a rare thing. Now, it might not show in the wins and losses, but it, it, it did it not? I mean, we had arguably the worst team in hockey. And we finished in front of a bunch of teams and we had 32 wins, 39 losses. It wasn't that bad considering the roster. So imagine when this roster gets stronger and stronger with the depth that we have and the farm system that we have and the trades we're gonna make, the future first rounders, which I'm gonna go over in other videos tonight. Just, just some thoughts there, guys, really, just some thoughts. So team unity is gonna be the key again. If we still have that team unity, I promise you that free agents will hear about it, be attracted to it. All right, folks, that's it. I got other videos to make, I gotta get on them. See you in the next one.